All right, so um, welcome everyone and thank you so much for coming in today. Um, I'm glad to be able to be here. Um, this is the first time that I've done a presentation for Indiana, but I've been working for EBSCO for a while. Um, so we are gonna be talking about um, what's going on and what's brand new. And there's a lot of things that are exciting and we have a very short period of time um, can someone remind me in the chat then? I think we're supposed to end at, um, it's an hour. It's an, okay. <laughs> I, can, I can hear I, you now. <laughs> okay, thanks, Kara. I'm okay. like, is it 15 minutes or is it, I knew it was either 15 minutes or an hour. And sometimes yeah. I like to get to see what other people think too. So thanks, Kara. Um, well, do you want to say something before we get started all the way? You can leave 10 minutes at the end for questions if you want. That'd be good. I just want to welcome you. I'm so happy you're here, Lisa. Thanks for doing this for us. We're really excited to hear what's new in Expire. Yeah, thank you, too. And what I told everyone, Kara, too, is that um, since there is so many people here, most people are muted except for you and I. Okay. Um, if, uh, but, but to everyone's using the chat. And so I will stop and look at the chat. If you can help me with any questions in the chat, too, that would be great. I will we'll stop throughout, but if we don't answer anyone's questions, I can, you know, we'll grab the chat and we'll kind of make an FAQ, you know, so okay. there's any questions, so don't, you know, just leave and say, well, they never answered me. Okay. That sounds good. Okay, good. All right. So let's go ahead and um, uh, here I am. I already kind of told some people, hey, I'm down here in New Orleans today. Um, no, it's not raining. Um, it's actually beautiful. And um, the weather's really nice too, so we're starting to get a fall. So instead of 90 something, it's like um, instead of high 90s, it's low 90s. So there's our fall, um, <laughs> and I don't mind that at all. And I, I have been um, working for EBSCO for a long time, and I'm I'm really excited though because you have you guys got a lot of really really good resources, and I love it when I can train on the fun stuff, you know. Um, and that's what we're going to do today is we're going to do only the fun stuff. Um, so we are going to be looking at what's new and mostly focusing on um, kind of the bigger, you know, you have a lot of, you have some upgrades to some items, and then you have some items like, let's say, this last one here, Communication Mass Media, that's a whole brand new database. You have a whole brand new database, Psychology and Religion. I'm not really going to be going into these, um, and I'm actually not even going to go into these either. Um, so these last two bullet points. But I want to really focus on kind of the gold, you know, this is gold down here too, but really what I think is going to be really useful for um, the public and the, um, you know, K-12 environment, which I'm assuming that majority of the users are here doing that. Um, for those of you that are higher upper level academic, you definitely have the Learning Express is for you too, the eBooks are for you too, Literary Reference Center is for everyone. Um, uh, you know, maybe not the super low uh, level of grade school, but it pretty much probably starts in, in uh, middle school and up, uh, middle school to adult. Um, this is pretty specific and it's adult. So we are going to be looking at these things and um, let me see, and I'm just going to go in live and, and look at a lot of them. We'll talk about the content and then we'll do some searches in there. Okay. And I think that's it. I'm just ready to share. I'm going to jump right in here. So as I share my browser, it should land right on some of the content pages that I wanted to share with you. So if someone, if one, I'll, I'll also bring up the chat and put that over in my desktop there. Okay, so um, if someone can tell me if they're seeing the Learning Express Library, just the page. Let me know. Now we are. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is this is what I do usually. Instead of putting a bunch of stuff in a PowerPoint, I like to show you how you can find out information about the content. Um, and what I do is I just Google. So I, I learn what the name of it, the brand new thing is, and then I Google it. So I just Googled Learning Express Library EBSCO. Um, so some people are saying it's super tiny, it's very small. Um, my screen is, my screen is on full. So I believe that in WebEx itself that you can also make it full screen on your own view. So um, if that's not the case, 
So even you're saying carrots not full view. There, I think that you have to do that on your own within within um, WebEx. Can someone verify that they're that they're able to manipulate it to full? Yeah, I do have two screens, but I'm not sharing both. So hold on a minute. Let me make sure that that I'm sharing second screen only. Let me see if that helps at all. Does that help at all? What I just did. Sorry about that. Let me stop sharing again and then just start. This is what we love about technology, right? So I know when I do project, I'm only looking at the second screen. I'm verifying that. So let me just share again and see what I can do. Um, sorry about that. Let's see if this is magic here. Okay, anything? Different about that at all. Um, let me just close this all out together. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So everyone's like, yes, that worked. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, again, you know, we do technology for a living over here. <laughs> um, all right. So this is just the content. So I just want to, I, what I did is I just Google, like, you know, the name of the database and I get, I get some general information about the content. And I do this because then you guys can do the same thing. A lot of times you will have on here, like access to a flyer or access to the title list, things like that, that really you can go back and get on your own. You know, you don't need to even ask anybody. Um, so, yeah, let me see if I can get rid of that green box then. Is that better? Because it's the chat box is what it is. So, um, okay, so here we're just learning express is going to be one of the main things we talk about. And really what it is, is it takes the place of your Turk um, resources and it is a test prep. So we have a lot of different test prep in there. There's going to be tutorials and practice tests and ebooks. And so this is, and then you can see right already on the screen, right? Things are going to catch your eye. It has the GMAT, it has the stat, it has a lot of those tests. It also has just core, you know, the school core um, prep information. So we're going to look at that. It has career prep and so on. So look, we're going to look at this and spend a we're we'll look at this first and spend some time in it. Um, the next thing that you have that I would say is like gold, just bouncing out at me are your brand new ebooks that you have. And in this environment where there's a lot of online uh, learning and online homework help and things like that, the ebooks that you have, you have 67,000 of them. Um, and they're all unlimited access. So let's go, you have a couple different um, collections. So they're special collections. They're, they're be able, they can, you can search them on your, their own, or you can search them all together at one time. So one of the special collections that you have is called the K-8. So um, that is, you know, that is all a collection that's specifically made and geared towards students that are in a K-8 environment, right? Um, so no matter where they're learning, they have access to these ebooks. Um, and again, these ebooks are unlimited access. That means that if one person takes this, let's just look at this one, bots and circuits, right? So, okay, well, one person is reading this book. Guess what? Another person can come and read that same book. 20 people can grab that book at the same time. 200 people can grab that same book at the same time. So unlimited access just means that every time you take something off the shelf, another one just pops up behind it and says, I'm ready, I'm available, all right? Um, so you have that within this collection itself, and there's 15,000 books alone in this collection. Um, the next collection that you have is um, the 12,000 books of, for the high school collection. Someone's asking about, will it work on Chromebooks? So if you can get to EBSCOhost on Chromebooks, um, and if you can, um, you know, you can read these right online, 
Um, so as long as you can open up a browser on your Chromebook and get to EBSCO, you know, get to your um, your ebook database, which is just using EBSCOhost, then it should be no problem reading these books. Okay. Um, we'll talk about reading them online um, versus uh, taking them and reading parts of them offline. Okay. And I believe, and if, as long as you can read a PDF on a Chromebook, it's going to work. Um, so this is another special collection that you have. You know, the additional 12,000 books that are geared just towards high school, all unlimited access. And then the last collection that you have is a huge collection, um, almost 50,000 books. And we're calling it the public library collection because basically it's, you know, it, that is just kind of like, okay, we're going to, I'm going to put 50,000 books together. It's going to be books from, you know, zero. So there's going to be picture books in here. And it's going to be, you know, um, uh, books to adult, you know, through adulthood. So like zero to 99, you know, who does the public library serve? Zero to 99, right? Or zero to 110, <laughs> however long we're living these days. But you can see that, you know, there's a flyer located here, um, general information just about the book itself. And I just kind of wanted to give you this visual. Um, and you have all of these already. They're already available to you right now currently. Um, and so the other thing too that's real a really great is the literary reference center. So literary reference center did take the place of another literary center that you had from Gale. Um, if I just look at this, I love these pages because um, of, because of these bullet points. So you can see that there's classic and contemporary poems available to you. This is all going to be in full text. Um, you know, there's going to be short stories and novels, and there's those plot summaries that you would expect to be in a literary database, along with art, you know, the literary criticism, um, author biographies, and so on. So I'm not going to read all of these, but, you know, also almost 700 full text literary journals. Okay. And so someone's asking about the selection of the ebooks. So EBSCO does employ of many librarians, um, and they do lots of different things. And one of them is, you know, choosing and kind of creating these collections uh, for the library so that you don't have to choose the 48,000 books yourself, you know. So we do have special librarians that are choosing and creating these collections in the background. And of course, we have a lot of different um, working groups too, where we work with uh, librarians you know, that are on the job like you, and you say, well, you know, what else would you want in here? So lots of working groups we work with and along with the librarians that we, um, the selection librarians that we employ. So hopefully that answers the question of how they're selected. Um, so that was the ebook selected. So Literary Reference Center, just a, you know, huge, huge um, resource for you. And then uh, Legal Information Reference Center. So I'm sure we have some public librarians. Um, and then also a lot of times we need to remember these things personally too, right? So do you, um, you know, if you ever do need um, maybe some information about creating a will or um, what about some tax information or, you know, um, starting your own maybe a side business or something, or maybe you're helping um, someone, you know, I'm talking personally, you know, but professionally too. So in, in a high school environment, I think that this is a great, um, I think this would be a great thing to use, but also in the public library. All right, so let's go in and kind of look around and see where we're going to find these resources then. So I'm here in Inspire, and um, they're going to be available in the databases A to Z. They're also going to be available in the tiled and in the by subject, okay? So if I want to look, I will, let's search Learning Express first. And I'm, I think the easier way to, to search that is going to be just the A, the, data, the A to Z, but also by subject, it's going to be under the career area. Um, and then here, it should be in there too. So it's many different entry points. Um, I'm just going to use this one to show you kind of the easiest way for me. So here are your ebook collections. We're going to look at that in a minute. But first, we want to actually search um, just that kind of standalone Learning Express. And here it is here. So once I click on that, so you're going to notice something a little different the way this works than your other, than everything else that we're going to search today, okay? So this is 
um, a testing, you know, kind of a test prep product, right? A test prep software. So how it works is me, you know, I'm going to come in as a user and I'm going to prepare myself for something, right? Um, either for some kind of school, I'll, I'll just show you this too. I think this is very helpful um, in the school environment too, along with in the public library environment and academic environment. So if I do have some career prep or just information that I want about careers or even joining um, uh, the military, you know, taking that ASVAB test for the military, I'm going to get to my, I'm going to have a goal. I'm going to use this resource to meet that goal. And then I probably won't need to go back in here right after that, unless I have a new goal that's then going to help me to get that. So this really does kind of lend to me having to make an account here and register so that I, my items are kept you know, in, you know, I can keep track of my um, progress for that goal, okay? And this is, this sign-in and registration is different from any other EBSCO sign-in and registration that you had before. So if you created an EBSCO folder, it's different from that. So no one, you can, I can almost like say, since this is a brand new resource, that anyone that wants to continue to use this and build their knowledge and take the tests and all that, you know, will have to create an account, okay? So just let's just start with that. But um, let's look at, I'm gonna, I wanna focus on, you know, how this works. Let me just close this again. I think I should be able to just go back home, kind of, it'll close everything up. Or maybe not, I'm just gonna click over and go back home. So what you do have when you first go in is you have these centers. And I want you to just kind of focus there on these centers. And we'll just look at a few for right now. But I show you, so the career preparation. Um, what about the high school equivalency? So I'm gonna have the GED in there and I'm gonna have the um, high set and then the TAF. So a couple different types of, of high school equivalencies are in there. Um, what about college admissions? So if I click on college admissions, those are gonna be your ACTS and your SATs and your um, GMATs and so on. So you can, um, you, you will find those test preps in there. And these are the things that are highly, you know, highly used in um, public library environment. And if you're in a school library, your counseling office should know about this and your, um, you know, whatever you're calling the office that is helping students to get, you know, your college readiness center, whatever you're calling it, should all know about these resources that you have now available to you. Uh, school center. So school center is really what, um, you know, it's kind of the core for the K-12, uh, for anyone that's working in the K-12 environment right now. So I do have elementary specifically, and I'll just show you here. It's, you're gonna see that, you know, when I'm in elementary school, I have a few different practice tests. These are gonna be online practice tests, they're gonna be tutorials, they're gonna be eBooks, they're gonna bring students up to a certain level. Um, when I click on middle school, of course, I have more, right? So now I'm introducing social studies, where before in elementary, I didn't have it, right? I only had uh, mathematics and English. So now I'm introducing social studies, higher level math skills, and then I also am introducing some high school prep exams. So then when I go to high school, you can imagine that now we're introducing super higher level math skills, quantitative, um, comparison practice and um, algebra, and then you know, some technology skills that are being introduced and so on. So all of these then kind of build on each other. Um, and you can see that I haven't logged in yet, but if I do want to, let's say, well, hmm, um, let me see, I really do need to learn a little bit more about geometry. What's there? And I can just kind of continue to browse and click through and I'm t it's telling me, okay, well, I have 12 tests for geometry, geometry practice, practice, and I have this practice one equations and two, and then measurements, practice one and two, and so on, right? So you see, the soon as I can get to the point where I have an action step to take, so I want to take the test, that's when it's saying, hey, who are you? Because this test may take 30 minutes. It may take an hour. Um, you're going to be able to um, 
choose how you take the test. You know, do you want to take it in practice mode where it gives you? So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll kind of show you here. So it is going to force me or, you know, or lead me to the registration process. And I can, if I want to, use my uh, a Google account, which is great. It's not, I don't have to use one more um, or create one more login and password that I have to remember. I can use my Google account here, or I can register here uh, for an account here. So either way, I can um, I have to, I have to get in there somehow so that it can then remember who I am. So let me see if this is going to work here. I'll use my Google. Okay, so I just quickly signed in with my Google, and now, you know, once I signed in and once I create that account, it knows who I am, um, and then now it allows me to then start the test. So let's look at one of these. So this is how all of the tests are going to work within Learning Express. And so it shows you right here the test details, so there's 10 of them, um, and then here's the different ways that I can take them then. So if I want to just say, hey, this is a real test, I have test anxiety, and I need to have that, you know, amount of time, and I need to get over that hump. So if I want to make it like a true simulation, I can choose that. Here's the way the practice, and it tells you see answer explanations after you've finished, or maybe I want to take the learner. I want to see the answers, the correct answers, the second I submit my answer so that I can kind of learn on the way, right? So there's lots of ways that I can take the test here. It gives me information about the test and about the scoring. Um, once I go through it, let's go ahead and just I'll um, I'll just do this. I'll I'll just do a few answers and show you them because then it's going to lead me. I'll just kind of just pick you know let's see A B C D E F G and so here remember I'm signed in so I can finish later. Um, or I can go ahead and score it here. So if I finish later, it's just going to remember where I left off um, and I can come back in and then I can start again. And it'll even remember the time. You know, if I have 10 minutes and I spend five in there, I finish later. When I come back, it's only going to have five. But what about um, scoring? So let me just hurry up and quickly score it. it it's saying, hey, uh, you skipped a few, but I'm just saying, well, just score it anyway. And so, uh oh. I didn't do very well, did I? So even my guesses weren't right. <laughs> so um, I could view the answers here, but it will give me then some recommendations. You see, so now it's saying, well, huh, you know, you probably need to take the, the grade eight. I need to go back, you know, go to grade eight geometry. I probably need to lend, um, download this ebook. And ebooks in Learning Express are different than your other ebooks that are in, that are outside of Learning Express. This ebook is, a PDF download uh, for the whole book. And you don't need a special reader and you don't need to um, check it out and you don't, you know. And so this is also unlimited, but I would say that it's looked at more as just like an, almost like an article just in PDF format, right? So the eBooks here are very easily accessible um, and can be, the whole book can be downloaded uh, for your use. Um, so also then it's telling me better take these two tutorials. So it's steering me. So now I have my pathway, right? Um, any questions at all? Please let me know. We went into, um, I can see that up here I can go back home or here over the centers. These are just those same centers in the front end, right? Where I went into school, we looked at college prep. But let me go back to home, kind of done with that for right now. Um, and we went into school center. Let me just show you this one to college students. In the afternoon or in the next session, I'm going to do a lot more in the school center, the homework help session, right? But here, college students, so this is actually when I'm in college, same kind of thing here. There's that graduate school admission, so there's going to be the GMAT and the um, LSAT and all of those. Um, what about uh, the CLEP? And then here I have kind of the adult review or, you know, the. A, college adult review and then I then here I really do have kind of those core adult skills so math skills for adults to build them reading writing grammar and then U.S. citizenship so who um, speaks Spanish reads Spanish fluently in the session you don't have to answer that but I'm saying if you don't I'm um, this is this is where you can listen up 
Um, so if you read Spanish and speak Spanish, then you already know exactly what all this says and what it means. But if you don't, if you're a little rusty on it, then all, if only thing you have to do is remember that the adult core skills plus the um, GED is in here, is in the Spanish. So let's look at the adult school, core skills again. So you have your math skill, your reading skill, your grammar, and then U.S. citizenship. Now let's look and see here. So here is grammar. Here is reading, lector, it's reading. Here's uh, mathematics. And then there's the GED, and then there's your citizenship. Okay? So now you can um, wow everybody by saying, oh, yeah, I know what that is. But this is great. This resource is great for, um, obviously, you know, for Spanish speaking, your Spanish speaking uh, patrons or students. So any questions about this at all, please let me know. Um, we were just using the browse area to see what's available, but I could also just put in here um, some type of, you know, some of my a question here. So let's see if I did say, well, are there GED items in here? Oh, yeah. Look at there's flashcards and there's prep, uh, you know, test prep and power practice. And um, there should be ebooks and everything else in here, too. You could put anything in here that you want. If I put something about nursing, um, you're going to have that kind of there's nursing assistant um, and aid and flashcards and all that. And that would be more into the career prep. But what if I put like the NCLEX, like a test prep like there? So same thing, NCLEX, so there's lots and lots of nursing. And then someone's saying, well, is the LSAT in there? So let's see. So if we don't say, well, huh, I wonder if it's going to be here or is it going to be here? I don't know. Just go ahead and put it up here and then boom, there it is. So you are going to have the logic games, the practice test. One and two logic games, practice one and two, and so on. And that would be under the college. Let me do that. And then um, prepare for prepare for graduate schools. And then there's that GMAT and the MCAT and the GRE and so on. So really, really great resources for you um, to share with all of with your users. Um, back to home. So. It, I remember I'm signed in, um, and let me just show you kind of where my stuff gets stored as I'm going through all of my different test prep items. So the stuff is always stored in this My Center. It's called My Center. So it keeps track of what I'm doing, if I'm taking tests, if I have any tutorials that are completed or half done, um, what about ebooks that I've possibly downloaded, and so on. So I can see that I'm going to have my um, this is where I'm going to jump back in and then take that, you know, continue on with my test if I did say to save it. Um, so someone's asking, well, what about like videos for these or um, can we show, you know, have help? Um, and so great. That's a, a great plant that I have in the audience there. So if you look at help, look right here, video guides. So um, Learning Express has, is created. Um, by EBSCO, you know, so everything in here has been really well thought out. And if I see this like here and I see video guides, let me go ahead and show you where that is. So look, at, so there's the full length. So this is going to be, uh, let's see if it tells you, 20 minutes of just kind of general basics overview, how to do stuff in, in, in um, Learning Express. But what about this registering or signing in? What about about or searching, how to take a tutorial, how to take a test? So hopefully that answers the question about um, are there mini videos. Um, so if you do want to promote any of these or use any of these, you're welcome to, um, or you know definitely just show them. Right there's a lot of help within the system right here. Okay, there's even accessibility keyboard shortcuts, um, system requirements, and so on, and FAQ. And then there's one other thing that I want to show you, um, and it's available to you. Uh, to all of you that are, you know, that need it. So down here, administrators and librarians, um, this is a great area for you to access some promotional materials for this. So it's, let's, we're going to do that and we're going to have to move on. But I just went to them to the bottom. It doesn't matter where I am. I don't have to be in that help center. Just on any page, I can go administrators and libraries, click on that, and I'm going to be able then to let me see which one I think I want this one or maybe not I think this one too I think either one of these will get me out to where I want to go 
So let's try this help guide. And it takes me out to um, EBSCO's help site, which is connect.ebsco.com. Um, but you have Learning Express, okay? So there's, there's little pieces of Learning Express that are kind of separate and, and um, EBSCO promotes these, but you have the full product. So you, you know, so once you know what you have, you know, here's suggested text for promoting the centers, right? So each center is its own, can be also its own help um, area. But what if I just, so here's, um, I don't know why we have so many of these, like here's promotion kits for learning. Yes, and then, but let's just click on this one. And then you're going to see there's flyers and there's bookmarks. What about creating direct links into the center, into the Spanish center, into the school center, into the testing or the GED or the, um, you know, the high school prep center. So there's lots of thing, ways that you can create those links if you're creating your own, um, you know, if you have your own, um, website, right? And then I wanted to show you these. So look at, here's a handout for homeschoolers. So for you public librarians that are in here, um, we know that, you know, a lot of other people that didn't used to call themselves homeschoolers are now, you know, kind of doing that. So a lot of different uh, handouts for you and you're available, you know, you can take any of these, they're all PDFs. A lot of times they'll have a place for you to fill in your information, like ask a librarian, here's the URL, here's the login and password, whatever it is. Or if you have an, a PDF breaker, you are welcome to break any of these and put your own logo in them and just use this kind of as a, as a starting base uh, for your promotion. Okay. So thank you. Uh, I think I, I think I do need to move on, but any other questions about this? Uh, just play around with it, you know, play around with it, use it and um, look at those centers and then start to think how you can integrate whatever library type of library you're from start to think about how you can integrate these um, this as a whole but also these individual centers into your website so you can pull these centers out um, and just point only to the you know to each one of these okay and think about how you're going to promote it on your website too so it's just a really great resource and a lot of times it's kind of hidden you know don't call it learning express call it test prep, you know, um, or and name it exactly what it is, like, you know, high school GED help or, um, you know, college admissions help and so on. All right, so let's go back and um, let's go into your eBooks. So a couple different ways that you're gonna be able to search your eBooks. Number one is your eBooks are in your Inspire Search, okay? So they are already here. So if you're using Inspire Search, then you should have access to all of those eBooks that are available. Um, number two, if you are using the Explora or the Kids resources, let's go um, here to by subject. So if you're using either um, the student search six through 12 and if you're using Explora High School, if you're using Explora Middle School, or if you're using Explora um, the elementary, then the ebooks are also added into there. So what you're doing is you're, any of those explorers, you're searching articles, um, you know, ebooks, um, newspapers sometimes, you know, so you're kind of having a little mini Inspire search that's really only made for this age level, right? And your Inspire search at the top is made for everyone. And then you have to kind of filter out the stuff that you don't want. These are smaller versions of that, but your ebooks are all there, along with then having individual links to ebooks only. Okay, so I would say ebooks and articles and more, you know, ebooks only, right? Same thing here. Ebooks and articles, ebooks and articles and more and more, ebooks only. So it kind of depends on how you want to search. And then I'm going to show you this on your A to Z page. If I'm looking for ebooks, if you just want to search, if you just say, well, I don't really care what collection it comes out of, I don't care what level it comes out of, I just want to look for some ebooks. I just want to see what we have through all of these collections. Search this one, this ebook collection. So it's just, it's not, it doesn't say library or school or K-8, right? Or high school or K-8 or public library. This one searches all of these, okay? So I don't need to, you know, go back and forth. So if I just want to search everything, I can do that. So I'll, for this, um, 
just to show you, to demonstrate, I'll, I'll just go ahead and go into that one. And here's where I'm searching everything. So you can see that I see that I have um, just some highlighted books here. Um, these are gonna be just a lot of those books that are on the shelf in schools and that are on the shelf in um, mostly, you know, mostly um, nonfiction, right? That are on the shelf in public libraries too. And you can see that, you know, this just by the, by the, by the um, title of it and kind of by the look, it's chibi art class. It looks a little like for younger viewers, right? And then you can see here, look at the Bacon Bible. <laughs> this is probably some kind of cookbook or something, right? Um, but you can see here is maybe a little bit of older, you know, the beadworker stories and um, one blade of grass. And then here's some study aids. So browsing by categories, these categories um, are just kind of, they're just over there, you know, so if you do want to see, well, because you do have um, the public library collection, you will have things under body, mind, and spirit. You will have things under cooking, um, and you will have things under home and garden, along with you will have, definitely have adult fiction and adult nonfiction, um, and so on. So you should have, every one of these that you click should come up with some type of um, ebook, right? And so let's just look, let me see. Someone has, I'll, do, I'll just go ahead and look at one of these. Um, I don't know, let's look at home and garden. So I, I have 477 ebooks that have something to do with home and garden. You're gonna have, I'm just gonna close this over here um, so you can see the bigger. So you do have the title of the book. You have the book that the date, you know, the date that the book was published. So you are gonna have very new uh, ebooks in here, along with then older ebooks too. Um, and then someone's asking, well, what format are the ebooks in? And so this that's a great question because look, so well, sometimes you will have a choice of either the PDF format, which is more of just a stack, you know, the page numbers are there. We know what PDFs are. Or you may have the acts, you may have the ability to uh, use the EPUB format, and that is um, more of a flowable text. So um, I'm, depending on the reader I'm using for EPUB, I'm going to be able to, you know, enlarge the text and, and minimize the text, uh, read it one page at a time, read it multiple pages at a time, and so on. So this is a newer, the newer flowable text for your um, iPads and things like that. This is more of just the PDF. There it is, straight and narrow. So these are the two entry points that I would ask you to focus on. This full download. I would say stay away from that for, for now. And the reason why is because I'm still just browsing the book. I haven't even opened the book up to see if I'm interested in it. And so what you're doing, if you just do a search and you jump into this full download, that basically means you ran into the library, you pulled the book off the shelf, and then you ran and checked it out, right? You didn't even open it up. You didn't even see if you were interested in it. Um, and also running and checking it out, well, do you have an account? You know, do you have your uh, information that you can ha do to create an account? So this takes preparation. You have to, you know, prepare your device for an ebook, and then you have to have an account to check it out. So I would focus on these two because these books are unlimited. Remember, I'm going to have, I'm going to be able to come back 20 minutes from now and get another part of this book, or two days from now and get another part of this book. I don't have to take it offline if I don't want to. The whole thing. But let's click in, and I'll just do something like this too. This is kind of a fun search. If I just do a 101, um, you're going to see really a lot of the difference. So here's quilting 101 and origami, and I have knitting and memory and stepdad 101 and intelligence 101, depression 101, law 101, um, and so on. So you can see that, remember, I'm doing multiple, I'm doing all of your ebooks at the same time. I'm not in the K8 only. Um, you're not going to have, you know, things like fraud 101 probably in the K-8, um, but you, I am searching everything you have. There's Trump 101 and Breaking Bad 101, dog training. Um, so, yes, so someone did say, oh, does it, does it, um, so first of all, someone's asking about Kindles and other things, and so if any, anywhere that you can read an EPUB or a PDF, you should be able to then read these two, okay? 
Um, also, the question is, well, was there fiction? And so I'll go back. Let me go ahead and open one of these up, and then we'll go back and we'll click on the fiction. There's not going to be that much, but there is uh, fiction in here. Okay. So let's just go ahead and go. Let's go into this dog training 101. And um, oh well, I really want to go into one that's EPUB two. So let me see if I can find a better one that's EPUB. Um, I don't know. I don't want to go into one of those. Let me just see here. Uh, maybe not. I don't. It's not really that important. Let me just go ahead and show you. I'll just go into. I'll go into the dog training and then I'll just maybe open up another EPUB. Um, or positive pairing, we'll do that one, or just mathematics. Maybe we'll do this one, mathematics. So here I have, I can see already that it's, you know, a little, it's juvenile nonfiction, so it's, it's going to be for a little bit younger audience. Um, and if I do want to, so if I click into the title, then I just go into the detailed record, right? So I'm not reading the book yet. I haven't taken the book off shelf, really. I'm just kind of saying, oh, okay, here's the description. Um, and so here is where then I have my choice or back on the result list. I don't have to click into the title. So I can jump into the PDF. Let's just do that. Or I can look at the table of contents. So if I look at the table of contents, now I can see, oh, okay, uh, top 101 mathematicians. So, oh, wow, maybe as, an, as a teacher, I might just want to grab these names and say, someone do some research on and choose a name. Right, because then at least you know that you're sending your, you, you know, you're picking something that you know your library has access to. So I kind of like that teaching and choosing topics that you where you've already kind of researched to make sure that the students can find information. Um, so if I just say if I want one of these, I'm going to jump in. Remember, I'm jumping into a PDF. Now, everyone should have been able to click on that 101 at the same time. So if I am teaching online. Teaching classroom and saying, hey, let's find this ebook, let's go here. Um, now I wanted you just I want to show everyone how to use it. And now this is your homework assignment. So you should be able to um, grab it and then it should be loading here. I don't know if something's wrong with my computer, but let me just go ahead. I might even try to click another one and see. I have no um patience at all. But let me just show you then if the the book is gonna load here, I have the table of contents here. And I might just go back out and try to try another book too. Um, let me make sure. Sometimes my VPN is a little messed up. Let me just make sure of that. No, that one looks okay. Let me just jump into another book here. See if I can get something to load. Um, there we go. So that's more typical, right? Usually when spinning and spinning. Anytime something like that happens, just back up and go again um, and or wait 10 minutes, right? You know, kind of the same with any any other uh, website that you're trying to access. So here I have this quilting 101. Maybe I want to look at the basics. I want to say, oh, okay, um, fabric information, or maybe I want to look at some projects. I want to share this project. Here's this pillow. And um, okay, so I have all this information about how to make this pillow, and this is what I want. I don't really care about anything else in this book. I'll come back and I'll get other things. But right now, I don't want to do the full download of the full book. I just want to actually then click here and see and just download whatever the chapter is for this pillow. So the system's always going to tell you what your maximum download is, and this is set by the publisher. So um, maximum download of a, the amount of pages, and that's fine. I can, you know, download up to 100 here if I wanted, or I just want this chapter, and I'm just going to create a PDF out of it. Boom. I'm already in the system. I don't need anything special. I don't need any special readers. I'm just going to make a PDF out of it and save it offline, and then there it is for me, just like a regular little PDF that someone else just sent me. Um, also, I can email it to myself if I want, or to, let's say I want to email it to a colleague um, or to my class. You know, if I found an article or a chapter in here that I want to share with them, I can say, well, hey, I'm going to email this to my class, I'm going to cut and paste all of the emails in here, and boom, now they have access to it. Um, maybe I want to, um, you know, download it and then upload it into a class. Maybe I want to save it to my Google Drive. Um, and then a lot of times I will also have, like in, in my Explora, I have the um, Google Classroom available to me too, the link here. 
So if I find a book in Explore, you can find these same books, you'll have a different, you'll have the ability to save it to your Google Classroom. Never in, in EBSCO, never grab this link here. Always grab, if you're, if you're gonna point to it, if I wanna point to this page and share it with somebody, I'm gonna grab the permalink here in my tools area, and I can see that if I grab this link here and sent it to you, it's going to allow me then to um, get right to this permalink page, okay? So it's telling me page 81. So let's go back. And this, so this was a PDF, and I'm just using the result list to go back. And so I can show you that the EPUB, you know, so let's see if I, I'll just do something else here. If I'm just going to look for. So I could do frogs, I could do money. I really want you to poke around in here because it's super exciting to see that. Do you see that? So I know that there's a lot of teachers in here. There's a lot of um, librarians in here that are looking at this and their eyes are going, wow, this is going to be great. So look at how fun some of these books are. Um, a lot of times to the money, you know, so just do, it, do some really simple searches and just see the types of books that are in here for you to use, okay? And so um, let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go back to new search and let's look at the fiction then. So um, here's adult fiction, or there, here's um, adult, um, let's just do that, children's and young adult fiction. So I can see that I do have then these fiction books here. Um, well, I, I, I guess I'd be surprised, but maybe not because you do you have almost fifty. What was it? Fifty thousand books. I said. Um, and I forget, but um, you do. You know, if five thousand of those are nonfiction. So, if you do have then one of these EPUBs, let's just open up. Let's go ahead and open up. Let me see if I can find another one. I'll just open up that one. It doesn't matter. So the EPUB works the same way. I'm just going to click on it. If I click on just the EPUB instead of going in the table of contents, it's going to take me to the first page. And But you can see that I have those same tools. So I can save. I can email. I can print. Um, I have my citation tool here, which if I am using this in a learning environment, then it's going to show me what my citation is. And I don't know, I think, I honestly think it's me and my network, which in New Orleans is not the best. I usually don't have a problem loading, um, like in specifically any of these eBooks, and you can tell me, let me see, kind of see how that EPUB is. So little, it looks the same, you know, it's just that you can kind of resize it. So let me see if I can get one of those to load. There we go. Oh, Boxcar Children. So, um, you know, I, I can kind of treat it the same way. So if we want to do kind of a read aloud, um, I can go ahead and, you know, send out or print out these pages, or I can send out these pages. Um, I can upload them somewhere, you know, into my classroom environment or email them and say, we're going to read chapter four this week. Um, and I'm going to, you know, everyone has access to chapter four. I'm going to email it to you, or we're just all going to go here by using this permalink right and we're going to go here and then we're all going to kind of follow along so hopefully uh you're excited about that i see that we have only about seven more minutes i have been taking questions throughout the session i know kara said leave 10 minutes at the end um but if you do have any questions please ask now and you can see that i got excited about both of these um, I think that both the learning express and your ebook and how they're integrated into a lot of your other um, you know, into your Explora and into your Inspire search. Those ebooks are going to be popping up at you. And so use them and find them and seek them out. Uh, so they're really great resources here. Um, I do want to move on and just show you maybe one minute of learning of um, literary reference and one minute of legal information reference center. So let's do that. Let me see if I can get there really quickly. Um, both of those are L's. So Literary Reference Center, uh, you you know, that's, it's just a really great resource. So let's see if it's going to make me log in. Nope. Oh, and I think we talked about, I think, Kara, we talked about changing these to that more visual reference center. 
I wonder what happened with that. So let me just make a note. I think um, that uh, they're working on it. I'm not sure if they've accomplished all of them yet. Okay. Okay. So this yeah, is no, a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's make a note of that. And um, let me see. So th this is this is all of that information, but it will be a more visual front page, okay? But I still I still just want to show you then, and we could still look at it. Um, so if I do do something like Shakespeare in here, um, but this first page will be way more visual. You'll be able to browse authors, um, and then you'll have more browsable kind of clickable features. But the second you do a search, it's very similar. But you can see that I have. Um, you know, a lot of different types of things that are going to be about Shakespeare. So I have some journals, I have reviews, I have criticism. Anytime I do show more, um, I'm going to be able then to see kind of those other areas. So I have biographies, I have poems by or about Shakespeare. So these are going to be things by or about, right? Because I didn't say Shakespeare's author. So I would have had to say Shakespeare is the author. And then every one of these would have been, okay, well, those are all the poems by him, plot summaries and so on, short stories. So if I do, you know, this is going to be where a lot of those really, really rich features are available to you. Um, and, and you use this just like any other EBSCO resource. You're going to have that PDF. You're going to see the title of the article or the item or the book. Um, and then you're going to see the date. And um, then the access point is always going to be underneath. And mostly for your literary reference center, that's mostly all full text too. Um, if you do look at the publications, that's gonna be um, all of the journals that are in here. So if you did do something like, um, I'm just gonna put that in there. And actually I usually do by subject. So a lot of professional journals are in here too. Reading Today, Reading Teacher, um, so a lot of, just to kind of give you an idea, uh, there's going to be a lot of professional journals in here that you can use and a lot of scholarly journals um, along with some, um, you know, just anything that has to do with literature. So that's going to be a great resource. The other one is Legal Information Reference Center. So let's, I think this one is, yes, this one does have that splash screen. And now I've just used too much. Let me see here. So I do have another way to log in. So you all are um, geolocation. So when you're in the state, you don't ha ever have to log in or you shouldn't, right? But since I'm not there, it's saying, I don't know who you are. You better log in. Um, so let's see where that legal information reference center. So this one should work. So this is more of the splash screen that I wanted to show you. And then if, if I just show you these, these NOLO books, I think I used to work in the public library, but even before I worked in the public library, these are very familiar to me. Um, so there's, you know, over 400 eBooks in here and a lot of them are these NOLO books. And remember I talked about even using this like at a high school level too. Um, so if I do want to learn more about, um, you know, copywriting or starting a business or so on, a lot of times I'll be able to find things like that. But I do see really super important information here about that, um, you know, divorce and wills and estates and rights and disputes and so on. So lots and lots of help in here. And the second you, um, if I do this and I say, okay, um, what about the pet? <laughs> So I can just continue to click through and then I eventually have my PDF access. So remember with EBSCO, a lot of times, even if the home page or the splash page were, looks a little different, then um, you, eventually when you get to where you can read it, you have those same type of tools. I'm gonna be able to open up a PDF here. I'm gonna be able to read uh, the PDF and then um, I can move around within the book itself as I'm going through here, I have those same tools of either printing or emailing. Um, I have my EBSCO folder. This is different, remember, so that for your Learning Express is a different folder. All of the other resources we talked about, the eBooks and things like that, if you want to save those 
in the EBSCO cloud, um, you can then that's what a folder's for. So I know we have one more minute left. I don't see any, so let me see. So there are some questions. Um, can you can you find read alike from Literary Reference Center? Um, I might have to answer that. So there's lots of ones about the Literary Reference Center. So um, I think yes, modern there's there are modern titles in there. Um, I can answer that, Courtney. Then we'll answer that in full um, in our FAQ. Okay. So um, also the school. Oh yeah. So is School Library Journal in the in the Literary Reference Center? So I would say this. That's being asked. School Library Journal is in many of your resources. So I would say, yes, it's going to be in um, Literary Reference Center, but you don't need to go there for that. You could go to, um, you could, it's going to be in Moss Complete. It's going to be in Master File. It's going to be in Academic Search. So all of those are going to hold, and so, and it's going to be here, you know, and I might even go here first. Um, and uh, if I, let me just see if it's going to let me and I probably have to log in. I don't know. Maybe not. I think it's a guest. So I would actually go here because this holds everything and just do your publication title search from here. Look for school library journal and you're going to be able to find it. Okay. So hopefully um, every, some people said, hey, this has been great. So I want to stop sharing and I want to thank uh, everyone for coming and for spending one extra minute too. I, I know we have a long day because I'm doing another session. So hopefully you're going to come back for the homework help session, which I'll really, really focus on, um, uh, you know, on anyone that needs really great assistance with homework help. Come with your questions um, and then definitely ask more questions in the session. Uh, Kara is available after, of course, you know, she's always going to be there, her and her team. Uh, to answer your questions as we move forward and start to use these great resources. So thank you so very much. And see, hopefully I'll see half of you at least in the next session, right? Which is a homework help session. Thank you. Lisa. A lot of it I'm gonna just do it. It'll be if you do, if you want to go to another session and don't want to come to mine, that's fine. Because um we we've done a lot of the homework help you know items in here and you can just kind of do that on your own. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to stop recording now. Thanks, Kara. And everyone else from Inspire that happened might happen to be here.